the lightweight subdivision. This is a um, uh, my current workflow, basically. And I wanted to uh, just make a video that uh, captures it so I can share it with you. It's not that complicated, but it's one of those things that's kind of has evolved over time, watching other modelers work and that kind of thing. And just watching the modeling landscape sort of shifting over the last six months, it's really gotten kind of crazy. Like it seems like every week there's some new modeling technique, right? Like just last week we talked about the new ZBrush and the live Booleans and all that. And I'm honestly thinking now well, that's probably not something I'll be using a lot in reality because this combined with some other thing that I'll talk about eventually are kind of negating that for me. So anyway, lightweight subdivision is modeling with the lightest cage possible. And we're able to do that by leveraging some stuff within Modo. And it's probably easiest just to talk about it. So let's get to it. So the entire notion behind lightweight subdivision is to be able to have a smooth mesh with the minimal amount of geometry on it. Now, um, this is a combination of multiple things uh, working together. And we've talked about these things in the past, specifically edge weighting and the rounded edge shader. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on either one of those because, like I say, we've already discussed them and you can find them in the same playlist. But uh, what we are going to talk about is uh, my setup for working with this quickly. Now, uh, I simply use two edge weights for 99% of my work these days. Uh, I have a hotkey set up for a 0% weight and a 90% weight which means that in the viewport, what I have is either a completely soft edge or a completely rigid edge. There's, you can do the in-between weights, but typically I find I don't have to on, on most shapes. We'll see that here on this piece. So uh, looking at this, you can see we have some pretty janky geo you know, on the sides and stuff, lots of triangles, uh, some ingons in the middle here, but none of that's going to matter because the edge weighting is going to take care of keeping all that flat and controlled. So the easiest way to see this in action is just to turn on the sub D on this particular mesh. And you can see, you know, it turns into the expected blobby mess. But what I need to do is select the faces that I want to keep flat and rigid. And let me go back into sub D and fire off my hotkey that assigns the 90% weight to these faces, right? And it flattens them out. Now it doesn't look like much yet, but watch. As I continue to flatten out faces, select that whole side, harden it, select this whole side, harden it, select that back polygon or n-gon, harden that, harden the bottom. Now it's all flat and controlled. And this piece on the top, you know, we'll get the same treatment. I'll be like, well, I want the back flat. I want these flat, sides flat. And now it's all sub deed controlled. And what I mean by sub deed is that we're at, uh, let me just show you. So when you have a mesh selected in Modo and you go to the surface tab of the properties, your Catmull Clark subdivision, this determines how far your subdivision is going. With lightweight subdivision, we typically work with a subdivision level of two. Two seems to be that, that nice middle ground for me where edges like the back edge over here, this rounds out nicely at two or nice enough anyway. At one, for example. One is a little too janky. Two looks very serviceable. Three is better but three is also much heavier uh, just watch this number down here in the viewport right so if we're at level one which we don't like it's 500 but if we go to level two it's about 2000 triangles and that's that's where i like to be if i go to three we're at 8500 we're getting a little heavy and the scene is going to slow down pretty rapidly once we start getting into the you know the millions of triangles so sub level two 
Now we're gonna look at some examples here in a second, but uh, the main point I want you to take away from this is that the whole reason, like it may seem counterproductive to worry about doing sub D on a piece like this if I'm just gonna keep it all flat and rigid, but it does allow me or affords me certain advantages, right? This cage is, is extremely light. So I can grab these faces and move them around, move them around, make adjustments, make uh, you know, make new edge loops, grab things, pull them out, that kind of thing, and mess around with this and generate new shapes pretty darn rapidly. And I'm not worrying about Oh, I got all that edge looped up and I got to take all that out or I got to make sure I select all the edges that connect to this vert and that sort of thing. It's all about keeping that cage light, basically. Uh, the lighter the cage, uh, the more freedom you have, uh, the more experimentation you can do. The more, uh, more exploration, I guess, you can do you know, as a 3D artist uh, to find that shape that you're really looking for. And use the rounded edge shader to uh, you know make everything happy in the end. And you can see we're not happy here in the end. We got a hard edge running around here, which I don't necessarily want anymore. So I'm going to select that and soften it out. You know, with a simple hotkey, then render it back out. And I'm like, okay, yeah, those are the swoops or whatever I was looking for, and it looks clean and wonderful. And that's pretty much the bulk of the uh, technique. So, um, like I said, we're going to look at a few examples here so you can see more representative type shapes. So to give a more practical example, uh, this is a little uh, test shape that I uh, busted out. Uh, you can see we got some, you know, there's a round part here in the middle. There's a rounded curved edge and some spots we want to remain hard and crisp. Now I can, I can render this off right now. And the rounded edge shader shows up and it you know, it does its job very well but you can see we still have faceting so we're going to have to sub d this now the way to sub d something like this you know, normally you'd have to put all the edge loops in and all that kind of stuff but instead we're going to use our weighting method obviously which is the whole point of this video now when it comes down to actually doing that for this particular shape i would just select those polygons inside there and hit my weight hotkey select all the outside edges and hit my weight hotkey. Now clearly this is not, not quite what we want. So you can see the shape has hard edges. So everywhere, so everywhere that we want a hard edge, uh, the fastest way to do it is just to select the flat faces and make sure they're not touching each other and hit the weight key. Going back into sub D, now you can see those remain crisp where the round parts round out. So I turn my wireframe on and just make my way around the mesh, uh, selecting the spots I want hard edges and firing my hotkey. It's pretty easy to get all the way around and get everything set up the way I want it to be set up. Turn off the wireframe and render again. And you can see now we have nice round edges and crisp corners all intermixed. And we're only rocking like 1600 triangles, which, you know, ain't bad. So let's say you were particularly ambitious and you wanted to automate that process. Well, that's pretty easy too. Let's, uh, here's one method using the Vertex Normal Toolkit, right? So I have no shading on this mesh at all right now. And I've taken off uh, all of my weighting so, so we can start over again from the start. So uh, let's say you throw an auto smooth on here of 60 degrees, for example, right? Now you can see the smoothing changed in various places. Now, if I use the toolkit to select all the hard edges, that pretty much selects all the edges that I need to harden for this to stay nice, right? Now, it missed these two over here, which I'll select, but then I'll go into sub D mode and fire my hot, my waiting hotkey, and everything snaps right out. Oh, missed these two as well. But you can see that was a lot faster, you know, than my going through and uh, selecting each face and making sure that it's weighted correctly. So yeah, this can be automated pretty easily. Now for the second example, I was looking to go for something a little more complicated and I built this thing, whatever this might be in your imagination. 
but there's a some sort of medical device. There's a, there's a main housing and there's a piece in the middle that kind of sits there and slides back and forth. Regardless of its function, uh, we can use this to you know, test out this lightweight sub D as well. So uh, you can see we have n-gons, we have some weird shapes, and if I just go ahead and smooth it, you know, we end up with a blobby mess, you know, as you would expect. So um, you know, on a piece like this, you can have a little more uh, artistic license with it. So let's start with this piece right here. You know, this is the least exciting piece. So we'll go ahead and harden the ends, harden those edges, and this piece is pretty much done now. So I'm going to go ahead and just hide that and get it out of our face. So now we're left with the main device. Okay. So how do we want to do this? Well, let's grab that ring, harden that. Grab, whoops, these two edge loops, harden those. And inside of here, we want to grab this loop, harden that, so that thing stays rigid. Maybe this loop here can stay, stay hard. Okay. Now this whole loop around here, we need to decide what to do with it, right? This outer uh, protruding shape. So uh, just selecting the whole loop like this, you can see this is what we're, you know, where we're at. So let's throw a harden on that. And, and you can see that does an interesting thing, you know, with the sub D working with it, it kind of pops it out. It makes those edges sloped, you know, which I'm actually liking. Now it's a little low res, true. There's, there's a couple ways to address that. If you didn't want this to have that much jank in it, you could you could take it up to subdivision level three if you wanted to. You know, but again, you're paying a price for that. You're, here we're at 4,800 triangles, and if I go to level three, we're up to 19,000. Yes, it looks better, but you have to weigh that against how large it'll be on the screen and you know that kind of thing. But regardless of any of that, let's just stick with the task at hand. So I've got this thing looking pretty much the way I want it to look. Okay, looking up from the bottom, I'd like to adjust this. And this is where, you know, having lightweight sub D helps a lot. Because I, I can just grab those edges and drag them back. And there's really no performance hit on me for doing that. Because, you know, this is a very light cage. A, a very light cage. Okay, so I like that. Uh, let's unhide that piece in the middle. And these parts in the end were supposed to be hard as well. So let me grab those, do a harden on them. Yeah, and then we can fire off a uh, render and see what this looks like. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I like the way that's come out. You can see with the rounded edge shader, most of that jank here goes away. So you don't really need to focus too hard on that you know, unless you really want to have this up in the player's face or what have you. But from here, you know, or even here, it, it's looking perfectly acceptable to me. Now, since we simply weighted these edges and we don't have a bunch of annoying edge loops to work through, we can actually play with this a little bit now. So let's say that I'm like, well, what if I wanna see what it looks like with rounded forks or whatever? So I just select those edges. I take the weighting off of those and fire off another render. Now I can see what that variation looks like. Let's, uh, let's get rid of this middle piece so we can see it clear, more clearly. It's like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that better. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this example, but I just wanted to show some, uh, some, some actual meshes that you might actually end up building and uh, how you can play with it, experiment, and have fun. So that's the whole technique. Um, in truth, this video is really sort of a part one. There's a part two I'm going to show you, hopefully soon, um, that incorporates a new kit that's in development that I can't talk about yet, but it really melds with this workflow beautifully. So uh, until I can talk about that, I'll see you next time.